Hi, I'm John Gartamash. I'm a student at Budapest University of Technology and Economics and a member of Crisis Lab. And for this research, my supervisors were uh, Dr. Boldisha Benchat and Levente, Levente Butya. All right, so let's start with a problem statement. Uh, we needed fresh ransomware for research purposes uh, as Crisis Lab. And we defined fresh as from the last week, from campaigns from the last week or month. And my task was to deliver this. So how do I do it? Uh, first, I looked at the news and uh, found that, all right, Maersk was hit by not Petya ransomware. And I thought that, damn, those guys have the freshest ransomware. And uh, yes, and I don't. So how lucky they are. Uh, yeah, so the, here is a solution for getting fresh ransomware. But unfortunately, I was unable to uh, build a $21 billion shipping company during a semester. So I had to look for other solutions. And my concept was the following. What if we had a collection of old ransomwares and a feed of new files from an outsource? Uh, and the method that combined these and the output uh, would be fresh ransomwares. All right, but we can generalize this. Uh, not for ransomware, but what if we change the, uh, the input, the old ransomware corpus input, to a search corpus? Then the output would be similar samples uh, to the search corpus. All right, this might be familiar to you as uh, virus total hunting. Uh, they use Yara rules, and the method is Yara rule matching. And yeah, it is quite expensive, but OK. Uh, the problem with this uh, is that Yara rules, although they can be automatically generated, uh, they do not work that well, and they need a collection of very similar files to deliver uh, more effective rules. And uh, the process of Yara rule matching is fairly slow, so it's in, on the scale of 0.01 seconds, and this is on a fairly simple rule on a fairly small file. Uh, and I needed uh, a much uh, faster method. So back to my work. Uh, we need three things, uh, old ransomware, feed of new files, and the method. Now, the feed of new files were provided to me by Yucatemi Technologies. Uh, these feed of new files came in every day. They were all malware, and uh, a database was uh, also accessible to me of roughly 300 million live mover samples. All right, so we have one of the three things I need. Uh, next up is the old ransomware corpus. Uh, I collected it through a course of two or three months, looking at the news for campaigns, uh, downloading the hashes from virus, or the samples for the hashes for, from virus total. So this took a while. And now for the method. Of course, you could guess it was LSH, locality sensitive hashing. Now, what is locality sensitive hashing? Basic, the basic concept of it is the following. For similar data, it generates similar hash. That's the main concept. It aims to maximize the probability of a collision for similar items. So similar items are going to equal for similar hash. This similarity between the digest, the hashes, is not, uh, not surely visible to our eyes, but uh, distance, uh, uh, yeah, a distance calculating uh, algorithm is also provided with the locality sensitive hashing method uh, that outputs a number, roughly a score or a distance, uh, uh, that uh, displays the similarity between the two source files. Uh, let, let's look at some examples. So first up, it's, uh, I'm going to talk about SSDeep, because this is the uh, only locality scientific hashing method that is available in public mobile databases, like in VirusTotal. Uh, yeah, and it uses an algorithm called context-triggered piecewise hashing. Uh, I might, I might, it depends on the time if I'm going to explain what it means. Yeah. Uh, the next one I looked at is SD hash. Uh, it uses statistically improbable features. The idea behind this is the following. 
if a, an improbable feature is present in a group of files in every sample, then if a new sample comes up and this improbable feature is present in that file, then it is almost, so it, the probability of this file not belonging to the group is fairly low. And I'm, I'm not gonna uh, describe uh, SD hash uh, and the followings because the test showed that SD hash was not applicable uh, for this, for more, more classification. And the third one I looked at is TLSH that stands for Trend Micro Locality Sensitive Hash. Uh, this algorithm uh, looks at the input by stream in five grams with a sliding window, creates statistics of these five, five grams, and basically the hash stores this, uh, these statistics. Uh, okay, so look at, let's look at an example. Uh, the top, there are two, uh, you can see two uh, texts and the hashes for them. Uh, the top and the bottom texts only differ in the highlighted character. And as we can see, the digest, uh, the similarity between the digest is even visible to our naked eyes. Uh, for TLSH, it is not this straightforward, so equal characters. Yeah. Uh, the reasons why I chose locality sensitive hashing are the following. First, the small data to store. So for ERA rule matching, we need the whole binary. Uh, the process of ERA rule matching needs to go through the whole binary and, and get a rule and uh, look at matching, while SSD and TLSH, we only need to store uh, like uh, roughly 100 bytes. And this is good because for uh, 300 million uh, movers, this is only going to equal about 30 gigabytes of data. Yeah. Uh, the second reason is fast automatic generation. Uh, SSD and TLSH uh, both generate digest in the scale of 0 0.1 or 0 0.01 seconds. Uh, and last, uh, fast comparison time. So for, a, as I mentioned, a fairly easy error rule and a fairly uh, small file, uh, 0 0.01 seconds uh, uh, took the process, the process of your rule matching took. Yeah. And for, as for SSD and TLSH, it is the, like on the scale of one millisecond, which is like 10 times or even 100 times faster and this does not matter on the file size because uh, the hash size is roughly always the same. So for TLSH, it is always seven bytes, 70 bytes. So it, it uh, won't change. Uh, all right, we've seen the pros uh, for local sensitive hashing, but are they applicable for our task? Uh, I took uh, one daily feed from this database. It uh, contained about roughly 35,000 real mobile binaries, uh, but they were not labeled, they were not classified, so the evaluation would be difficult. Now, first up, I calculated the SD hash and TLSH, no, the SSD and TLSH digest for every sample, and then the cross references between every, every and every other sample. So, uh, in the following, I worked with, I, I gained a database of distances, uh, and I, implemented three clustering algorithms to evaluate the uh, usability of locality sensitive hash, these two locality sensitive hashing methods. Uh, I'm not gonna describe them uh, because, yeah, so they, they um, all right, I'm gonna mention the third one because that was the most effective. Uh, I, if there were some groups already created and a new file came up and uh, new, digest was generated, then this, this file was inserted in the, uh, uh, this group if it was close to at least a few members of the group. So one uh, closeness to a sample is not enough, uh, as I found out, because then uh, one gigantic group was created with like 20,000 files and, and uh, like another 20,000 groups with only one sample in them. Uh, yeah, as for the results, as I mentioned, I evaluated by hand, so I obtained groups from these three cl clustering algorithms, and I downloaded the binaries and looked at them by them, and looked at them. Uh, the disassembly, yeah, and hybrid analysis. Uh, 
and it showed that samples in the same group are similar. So this process of locally sensitive hatching works. Uh, and uh, I have to mention that so these groups uh, contained more than one sample, because of course if a group contains one sample, it is similar to itself. So there were groups created, and the files in them were similar to each other. Uh, now, as I mentioned, SDHES was not applicable, so it was like totally <laughs> wrong. Uh, another thing I found was that SSD score was badly scaled. Uh, so the dis distance calculation in SSD, uh, the output was a score between 0 to 100, where 0 equal to a, perf a mismatch and 100 equal to a perfect match. Now I found that the score of 1, uh, if, if a distance uh, was 1, then we could be like 70% sure that this uh, similarity was correct. So we do not have the range to define the threshold uh, between 0 and 100, because one, uh, the score of 1 means uh, similarity in most cases. Uh, yeah, and there were uh, similar samples in different groups. Uh, so I, I and, and the next one is that TLSH appeared to be the best. Yeah. Uh, because uh, I, 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 uh, the threshold, I, I selected the thresholds to uh, obtain no false positives. So like this 70 threshold and the threshold of uh, uh, one were selected uh, through this measure. And uh, with these thresholds, uh, there were similar um, uh, samples in different groups. But this is not a problem for us because we only wanted to find similar samples. We did not aim to find every similar sample in a database. All right, so let's look at some hashes. <laughs> First, uh, this search was completed by both SSD and TLSH. Uh, this was on the whole database, so not on this small corpus. Uh, and the, 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 so now we see the SSD results. It, the, the original sample I searched for was this grand, grand crab uh, sample, you can see the, T, the SSD hash for it. And uh, the algorithm found uh, the similar samples on the bottom. And as we can see, there, there are uh, similar uh, characters in the hashes. Uh, they are displayed in the red boxes. And of course, they, these files are not the same, so uh, there are different characters as well. Uh, so for the same search, the input is the same sample, but now it, the, it's the TLSH digest value. Uh, and the algorithm was unable to find uh, the similar sample. So the, the hashes you can see on the bottom are the TLSH hashes for the same, uh, for the similar samples that were found by SSD. And as we can see that there are similar characters in these two digests, but with the threshold of 70, uh, the algorithm uh, deemed the bottom samples different from the one on top. All right, so yeah, and next up is the other way around. So the same search, uh, I took the same search with uh, a Saturn ransomware, uh, one sample as an input. And now uh, it was TLSH that found the, the similar samples. Uh, you can see the, it's, uh, you are further away but you can see that uh, the digests are, are, are visible, the similarity is visible between them. And this time it was uh, SSD that was unable to find the similarity, although for the similar finds that were found by TLSH, the, the similarity is visible even through SSD hashes. But from the original sample, it was not. So then I moved on to the real database. It, as I mentioned, it, collect, it uh, contained 300 million uh, MOVA samples. Uh, the hash generation for SSD and TLSH took roughly the summer, so two months. And, uh, but then I, uh, so in the previous, so for the small data set, I calculated cross-references between every two samples. Now, this does not scale well. Uh, so for 300 million samples, it would roughly take 3 million years. 
But we do not aim to, uh, to group the whole, to clusterize the whole uh, 300 million malware database. We only need to search for a small corpus. And that way, we only need to calculate the cross-reference between every member of the corpus and the 300 million uh, movers in the database. Uh, so the ransomware corpus I collected through the months contain, now contains 477 samples from 15 different families, ransomware families. And the, uh, my implementation currently uses one process only on one thread. Uh, and for a search for one sample, so if the input uh, corpus only contains one sample, then SSD search is completed in roughly 10 or 20 minutes for 300 million files. And for TLSH, it's roughly 50, 50 minutes. Like, I, I think that's incredible. And for, the 400, for all the 477 samples, it took like two days for, the both, for both of the hashes to uh, complete. Uh, yeah, so it is live and working. Uh, so what I completed was uh, I had a mobile database, I uh, selected a search corpus, and through the method and implementation of TLSH, I was able to uh, find similar samples from this uh, mobile database. And here's the same uh, with the first tasks, so the first problem. Uh, yeah, future work. Uh, as you could see, I only used one process and one thread. Now, parallelization could result in much better, uh, could provide much better results, like from, uh, yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, uh, I will widen this ransomware corpus to obtain maybe 20 or uh, more uh, families and more samples. Now, I found, I looked at the source code uh, of both SDS and TLSH, and I found that we, could develop a better LSH method. So both of these uh, local sensitive hashes can be easily fooled if uh, that was the intent of the uh, APTs. And, but uh, we could develop better uh, TLS or uh, LSH methods. Uh, that was uh, what I found, and yeah, it's a future work. And of course, there is a chance for labeling this 300 million MOVA database but not by comparing every uh, two samples, but by grouping them in small groups and only calculating uh, new samples distance from uh, one or two or a few members of the group. Uh, all right, so that was my work and presentation. Uh, thank you for your attention, and if you have any questions, I'm here. Thank you.